Is it possible to win a Pokemon battle if you tell your opponent your moves before you make them? It seems impossible. After all, if your opponent knew the exact move you would make, surely they could counter them, right? I set out to answer this question. The thing is though, I'm not like other people. You see, I have something scientists refer to as the world champ difference. So setting out to win a singular game would be a little beneath my standards. Instead, I set out to win five games in a row, telling my opponents my moves first every turn. But I'd immediately run into a problem. You see, there's no way for you to communicate with your opponents in Sword and Shield. Thanks to Nintendo's removal of the microphone with the Switch, you simply cannot complete this challenge. Thankfully, today's video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd. Download Honkai Impact 3rd to get crystals and asteroids, and try characters for free. This is the 5.8 release of Honkai Impact 3rd, and with it comes new characters. Griseo is one of the 13 flame chasers, and a new addition to the game. There's an event related to Griseo called the Journey of Painting Stars going on right now. Playing cards can earn you crystals and material options. In addition, you may receive Luna Kindred's new outfit before the dawn. Existing characters also get some new costumes as well, like this character called Hersher of Thunder's new outfit. And if you plan on attending either Anime Expo or Japan Expo in July, Honkai Impact 3rd will be there with booths where you can get bonuses for free. Download the game now to redeem the gift code on screen for in-game bonuses. Thanks to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring this video. There's Showdown. Showdown is an unofficial Pokemon simulator with, among other things, a chat box. With this, we had everything we needed. I decided to use the team I used at the most recent Pokemon tournament featuring Lunala and Groudon. I loaded up Showdown and began the challenge. I needed a name for this challenge, and I settled on Are You Psychic? It felt appropriate. My first opponent had a very legit team, featuring Solgaleo and Kyogre with a bunch of powerful support Pokemon. I tried to tell them which Pokemon I was bringing, but... Nintendos. After overcoming my first obstacle, it was time to begin. My opponent leads off with Incineroar and Rillaboom against my Lunala and Incineroar. I decide to go Fake Out into Rillaboom and Meteor Beam, which KOs Incineroar in one hit. Because Meteor Beam boosts Lunala's special attack, there isn't really good counterplay from my opponent against it. Lunala takes out Incineroar, and I barely take any damage. My opponent sends out Kyogre. Now, this is spooky. I normally would switch in Gastrodon and Protect here, but because I have to tell my opponent I'm doing it, they can just KO Gastrodon on the switch in with Rillaboom. I decide to make a hybrid play, switching in Gastrodon and Dynamaxing Lunala. Kyogre sets up a Calm Mind, but takes huge damage from Lunala first, and Rillaboom does a little damage to Gastrodon. I attack Kyogre again next turn and switch in Incineroar, and my opponent, seeing that Rillaboom isn't being targeted, takes the opportunity to switch it out and reset the Intimidate drops. Unfortunately for them, I KO Kyogre. I try and parting shot the Zapdos, but their Rillaboom fakes out Incineroar. Zapdos nearly KOs Incineroar, but Lunala one-hit KOs Rillaboom on its last turn of Dynamax, making it a 4 against 1. I get Trick Room up and switch to Gastronon, and there's no longer a way for my opponent to win thanks to their speed boost. One win, no losses. I was feeling confident, until I saw my next opponent's team. You see, they had Shedinja, one of the most annoying Pokemon to fight against. She didn't just Wonder Guard ability prevents her from taking damage, unless it's being hit by a super effective attack. And it often runs the move Ally Switch, which makes hitting it difficult under normal circumstances, and near impossible when you have to tell your opponent your moves. I decide to lead with Lunala and Regieleki, against my opponents Incineroar and Shedinja. I want this Incineroar gone as soon as possible, so I decide to go for Meteor Beam into it, and Assurance to try and KO Shedinja. Incineroar uses Fake Out, stopping Aleki from hitting Shedinja. Shedinja breaks Lunala's Shadow Shield, and Lunala misses Meteor Beam, which is only 90% accurate. Ugh. I try once again to do damage to Shedinja and protect Lunala, but seeing what I'm going for, my opponent ally switches to keep Shedinja safe. I decide to try another tactic to KO Shedinja, since what I'm doing clearly isn't going to work. I Dynamax Lunala and go for Max Rockfall into Incineroar to set up the sand. My opponent goes for Poltergeist, 
a super strong move that ordinarily would KO Lunala. But Poltergeist fails if the user isn't holding an item, and I've already used my Power Herb. Because Shedinja only has one hit point, it always dies to sand or hail damage. Kartana and Kyogre switch in, and things start looking bleak. Whenever Kartana takes a KO, it gets an attack boost, and all my Pokemon except Lunala are in range of Kartana or pretty close to it, especially paired with Kyogre. I decide to try and bait the Kyogre into maxing by using Fake Out into it, but my opponent doesn't fall for it and maxes Kartana. Kartana deals half of Lunala's remaining HP, but Lunala fires back with big damage. I decide to try and bait Kartana into KOing Lunala with Max Grass, to prevent Kartana from running away with Max Airstreams, and switch Incineroar into Groudon. My opponent makes the correct move and doubles Lunala, but somehow, miraculously, it survives. Lunala finishes off Kartana, and now Regieleki can always beat Kyogre, securing another victory. Two wins, zero losses. My next opponent had quite an unusual team. I wasn't really sure what was going on, so I decided to lead with Charizard and Groudon to try and overwhelm them with offense. My opponent leads with Absol and Zygarde. Absol goes for Parish Song, but I do huge damage to Zygarde with Max Airstream and KO Absol with Precipice Blades, leaving Zygarde with only 5% left. Zygarde uses Thousand Waves, trapping my Groudon on the field. My opponent sends out Ditto. I'm a little worried that Choice Scarf Ditto will outspeed my Charizard, but I decide I can probably survive. So I go for G-Max Wildfire into Ditto and Precipice Blades. Ditto isn't Choice Scarf and faints in one hit, and Groudon finishes off Zygarde. My opponent's last Pokemon is Zacian, but thanks to the speed boost I got turn one, I easily outspeed and KO it in one hit. Three wins, zero losses. I loaded into the fourth game and was taken aback by what I saw. Charizard Groudon, Ndidi Xerneas, and Sceptile Frostlass? Both Charizard and Xerneas are huge threats that need to be respected, and I don't really have any idea what Sceptile or Frostlass are doing here. I decide that the lead I'm most worried about is Xerneas and Didi, so I decide to go with Charizard and Groudon since both Pokemon have spread moves to hit Xerneas. Unfortunately, my opponent knows what I'm leading, so they decide to counter with Sceptile and Frostlass? What is going on? I know Sceptile gets rock moves, and both Frostlass and Sceptile threaten Groudon, so I decide to switch to Incineroar and Max Airstream Sceptile to try and get a speed advantage. My opponent, however, goes for Icy Wind with Frostlass to cancel out my speed boost, and since I told them Incineroar was switching in, they go for Max Quake, breaking my Shuka Berry and getting a special defense boost. Max Airstream does way less than I expect, and activates Sceptile's weakness policy, which doubles its offenses. It also makes Sceptile twice as fast thanks to its Unburden ability. This has gotten very scary very quickly. I make a quick call that I can win the game in a 3v3 if we trade Dynamaxes, so I attack with both Pokemon into Sceptile to try and guarantee it goes down. Frostlass, however, reveals Ally Switch, protecting Sceptile. Ugh, <sighs> great. Sceptile reveals Max Rockfall, but thanks to my Charty Berry and Incineroar's Intimidate, Charizard survives. Thanks to Frostlass's Focus Sash, it takes both my Pokemon's moves before fainting. Indeedee comes in to protect Sceptile with Follow Me, and Sceptile finishes off Incineroar as Charizard gets a speed boost with Max Airstream. Indeedee gets knocked out thanks to a timely critical hit, and we each send out our final Pokemon. Groudon for me, Xerneas for my opponent. I try and get Blast Burn onto Xerneas, but Sceptile finishes off Charizard with Rock Slide as Xerneas goes for a Geomancy. I try to get a Precipice Blades off, but uh oh. Thankfully, I have my ace in the hole. Sceptile gets knocked out by the wildfire damage, and I send out Lunala. I can protect in Trick Room without fear, then finish off Xerneas with the Precipice Blades. Four wins, zero losses. Just one more win and I'll have accomplished my goal. I'm getting nervous now, as some of these have been close. It's time for the final boss, Lugia and Eldegoss? Alrighty, I'm worried about Kyogre, so I opt to go with a more defensive approach leading with Lunala and Incineroar against Toxapex and Eldegoss. I don't want Lunala to fall asleep, so I protect it and use Flare Blitz turn 1, as Eldegoss sets up a Cotton Guard and Toxapex goes for Toxic Spikes, totally ignoring Lunala. With Toxic Spikes set up, I'm going to need to accelerate the pace of this game, so I go for Meteor Beam, even though Moongeist Beam would also KO, because I want the special attack boost. My opponent, unfortunately, goes for another layer of Toxic Spikes. Kyogre switches in, and thanks to Cotton Down, it's guaranteed to be faster than my Pokemon. I can't lose my Pokemon just yet, so I protect Lunala and go into Gastrodon. Toxapex protects itself, and Kyogre gives Gastrodon a boost. Every Pokemon on my team is going to be poisoned except Lunala now, so I think it's time to turn on the Jets. 
since Toxapex just protected, it's a sitting duck. I try to hit it with Max Phantasm, but my opponent decides to sack Cartana instead. This time, Kyogre just protected, so I smack it with Max Phantasm and Yawn. But because I told them that Yawn was coming, they Max Lightning to block it. Now it's the Toxapex who just protected, so I can double it with both my Pokemon, taking it out. Unfortunately, my Dynamax is ended. I try and get Trick Room up, but Kyogre finishes off Lunala as Gastrodon does a little damage with Earth Power. I go into Groudon and try and win the game with Precipice Blades, but I miss. Kyogre protects itself and Gastrodon goes down thanks to the poison. Incineroar is sent out. Thankfully, Kyogre just protected itself and has three defense drops from Lunala, so Fake Out is able to finish it off. Five wins, zero losses. I'd done it. I'd accomplished my goal. Except, well, I really love flying too close to the sun. I got a little excited, a little overzealous. I thought to myself, well, if I can win five games without losing, maybe I can win 10. And so I raced towards my demise like a moth drawn to a copy of Kirby Air Ride. Before we continue on our journey, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. Currently, only about 10% of my viewers are subbed, which means there's a lot of people watching and hopefully enjoying my content who aren't subscribed. I'd love to be the first competitive Pokemon channel to hit a million subs, so I hope you'll support me on my journey. The next team I was up against was Spooky, to say the least. Calyrex Shadow, Zacian, Amoongus, Landorus T, Regieleki, and Lapras. Apart from Lapras, every other Pokemon on this team is a problem for my team, especially the combination of Calyrex, Amoongus, Aleki, and Landorus. My opponent leads off with Lapras and Amoongus, and I decided to be really aggressive and double the Lapras. My opponent wasn't looking at the chat, apparently, and I not only KO their Dynamax Lapras, I also block Spore with the electric terrain I set up. My opponent forfeits after this disastrous turn one, and I advance with a score of six wins and zero losses. My next opponent has a standard Caloric Shadow Zacian team. I bring the same Pokemon as the last game and face off against Thunderous and Rillaboom in the lead. Thunderous is the most likely Maxmon here, so I double it with Max Airstream and Meteor Beam, but my opponent doesn't max it and therefore doesn't survive the combo. Rillaboom does over half to Regieleki with high horsepower, but overall the turn goes in my favor. My opponent sends out Zacian. I decide to double the Zacian, as it's going to be a big threat later, and thankfully my opponent lets it go down. They Dynamax their Rillaboom and do huge damage to Lunala, but they're down to their last two Pokemon. I decide to switch my own Incineroar in to get Intimidate off against these two physical attackers, and I do about half health to Incineroar, but Aleki goes down. Thankfully, my opponent forfeits before I finish stalling out the Dynamax, and I win my 7th game still undefeated. Enter Bolg. Bolg is the villain in this story. You see, they have two evil Pokemon, Venusaur and Gothitelle. Both these Pokemon use inaccurate sleep moves to ruin your day. I lead off with Regieleki and Lunala, but my opponent leads with both Venusaur and Gothitelle. I try and double the Gothitelle to take it out, but since I told Bolg Max Lightning was going into that slot, they were able to switch in Groudon and negate the effect while dealing huge damage to Aleki. Venusaur protects itself as Groudon switches to Gothitelle, but I do big damage to Gothitelle and get a speed boost on both my Pokemon. I make the same play again, but Gothitelle reveals Ally Switch, keeping Venusaur healthy. Venusaur finishes off Aleki, and I go into Incineroar as my opponent sends out Xerneas. Now Venusaur looks like it's just barely out of range of Moongeist Beam, but Meteor Beam is a little stronger thanks to the special attack boost. And since I have fake up pressure, I can take the KO on Venusaur and stop Xerneas setting up. Except, yeah, <sighs> whoops. Because I missed, Venusaur KOs Lunala, and I can no longer deal with Venusaur. My opponent adds insult to injury too. Ah, crushing defeat. I know they say it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, but the weight of my colossal failure weighs heavy upon my shoulders. My beloved Pokemon who put their faith in me my viewers with their unwavering confidence. I failed them all. I sink into a pit of despair, and years pass. The grass grows, seasons pass, yet I remain a shell of my former self. I have to break free of this. I will find redemption. I can no longer win 10 games undefeated, but maybe I can win 10 games total. I brush myself off and get back up, and load into yet another terrifying team. My opponent leads Kyogre and Whimsicott, now, Gastrodon is immune to Kyogre's water attacks, so I switch it in. But because I told them, they use Whimsicott to take it out in one shot. Not a great start. I go into Groudon and try to use Trick Room with Lunala, but because I told them what I was going for, 
Whimsicott's Taunt stops Trick Room from going up. Groudon does at least do good damage to Kyogre. I use both Pokemon to attack into Whimsicott, but not before Kyogre does half of both my Pokemon's health with Blizzard. Kyogre faints due to the sand I set up with Groudon. My opponent sends in their last two Pokemon, Zacian and Galarian Darmanitan. I switch my Incineroar in, and thanks to Intimidate, both my opponent's Pokemon get weaker. Groudon survives Darmanitan's max Hailstorm, and is able to KO Zacian in one hit. The issue is, my opponent still has two turns of Dynamax. I use Parting Shot and Protect, but because I told my opponent, they do a bunch of damage to Incineroar. I protect my Lunala and attack with Groudon, but my opponent finishes off Groudon. Unfortunately for them, taking this KO means they've fallen directly into my trap. Their Dynamax ends as I send out Incineroar, and I'm able to use Fake Out with Incineroar to finally set up my Trick Room. With Trick Room up, Incineroar is able to KO Darmanitan in one hit. 8 wins, 1 loss. My penultimate challenger was sent to test my emotional strength. You see, this opponent was using Leafeon, a Pokemon near and dear to my heart. Not only that, they also had Registeel, a Pokemon I brought to the World Championships back in 2013. I lead off with Incineroar and Lunala, and immediately stare down Leafeon, my beloved. I go for Parting Shot and Trick Room, and eat an Electroweb and Yawn, breaking my Shadow Shield and forcing my Lunala out. I get Incineroar back in, but Leafeon maxes. Groudon takes out Aleki, but Leafeon deals half of Groudon's health with max overgrowth. The big problem now is that Kyogre switches in, and if I'm not careful, Kyogre and Leafeon can KO my whole team. I Parting Shot Kyogre and protect Groudon, and take a max Steel Spike and Water Spout, wasting a turn of my opponent's Dynamax. I think about making a defensive play, but I'm worried about running out of steam. So with my time running out, I decide to go on the offensive and double Kyogre. Groudon goes down, but I've done a ton of damage to Kyogre. Here's where my Leafeon expertise comes into play. I know Leafeon has great physical defense, but pretty abysmal special defense. Gastrodon isn't a very strong Pokemon, but thanks to the Storm Drain boost from earlier, Dynamax, and Leafeon's poor special defense, I know that Max Hailstorm can pick up the one-hit KO on Leafeon. Kyogre hangs on from Lunala's Moongeist Beam, but thanks to the hail, it goes down anyway. My opponent's last Pokemon is Blastoise, and they have no hope of winning against Gastronon. 9 wins, 1 loss. One last opponent stands between me and my goal. Unfortunately, it's going to be a mountain to climb. They have Yveltal, who shuts down Lunala, Solgaleo, who I need to be immensely careful about, Landorus, who is just a huge nightmare for my team to deal with in general, and to top it all off, Regieleki who I hate using Charizard against. The issue is, I really do need to use Charizard here. And while I normally would try and outplay my opponent, that's a bit difficult when you're telling your opponent your every move. I lead with Incineroar and Charizard, with both ground types in the back. My plan is to try and bait the Regieleki into Dynamaxing and then deal with it with my ground types, then try and win with Charizard. Unfortunately, my opponent doesn't take the bait, though I also don't take much damage. I feel like now is a good time to go for Swords Dance, and I think Yveltal will switch in for Regieleki, so I yawn that slot. But since I told my opponent that I wasn't attacking Aleki or yawning Landorus, they can freely switch to Yveltal and set up a Reflect. And now Groudon is in danger of foul play. Aleki switches into Landorus, as I protect and yawn Yveltal, and block the foul play. I decide to double Yveltal with Rock Tomb and Earth Power. If it stays in, it falls asleep and takes damage. If it switches out, it's likely to switch into a Pokemon that's weak to ground. Solgaleo is weak to ground, but the problem is... <sighs> that's gonna be an issue. I want this Fire Cat gone, and since if I protect one of my Pokemon, it'll just take out the other one, I need to attack with both. Can I get some Fs in the comments for Groudon's Heroic Sacrifice? I decide to go into Charizard here, but for some reason, it says my Charizard is slower than Solgaleo. Huh? I realized that this whole time, I have had this weirdo terrible Charizard I was testing without max speed and zero special attack investment. I didn't notice because Charizard was still doing absurd damage, and it has no special attack. Why? Anyway, I see now that my Zard is too slow, so I've got to make a new plan. Solgaleo doesn't know that I'm slower, so it protects, and I get a yawn into Landorus, who has switched to Aleki. I Earth Power Solgaleo, doing a little more damage as Solgaleo Max Mindstorms my Incineroar, and Aleki falls asleep. It's time to turn this game around. I use Parting Shot to get Charizard back in, and thanks to my absurd bulk, don't even take half from plus two Solgaleo. I KO Regieleki and Solgaleo with G Max Wildfire. 
sending my opponent into their last two Pokemon. And here's where I bring out the true world champ difference. You see, I noticed earlier that Landorus was moving before my opponent's Solgaleo. That means that Landorus is holding the Choice Scarf and is faster than my Charizard. While normally I would be tempted to just attack this turn and do damage, I know better. I protect Charizard and switch to Incineroar, as my opponent doubles Zard. Now I can fake out an Airstream into the Landorus, to finish it off with help from the Wildfire, turning this into a 3 against 1. Unfortunately, Yveltal is super bulky and can heal back with help from Oblivion Wing, so this isn't over yet. I weaken Yveltal with Parting Shot and get Gastrodon back in, as Yveltal almost takes out Zard and heals back up. I get Yawn off with Gastrodon and Blast Burn with Zard as Yveltal snarls, making Gastrodon even weaker and taking out Zard. Now I can fake out an Ice Beam as Yveltal falls asleep and finish it off with Flare Blitz. 10 wins, 1 loss. And so I am finally able to rest, having completed my journey. There were trials and tribulations, but in the end, I'm glad I experienced it. That's what life is all about. Let me know what you thought of this challenge, and if you'd like to see more in the comments.